So I'll be looking at an array of different stoves, straight from pressurised stoves, pictured here at the rear, all the way to a couple of semi-pressurised stoves, right through to an array of stoves we can make ourselves, and some of these are my favourites. Okay, this is one of my favourite stoves of all time. It's uh, really easy to make and it's really fuel efficient. Uh, we're going to have a go at making one. Here's one I've already done. This tin here is the same as this. It's your fancy feast or your gourmet gold with a row of holes pinched through the top here I just used a thumbtack and poke some through like that the only difficult bit I had was finding the lid for it to sit in as you can see I had some stove rope which now sits in the bottom here so this is my fuel reservoir and pot stand. It then leaks the fuel or wicks it rather into the stove rope and the cup is placed directly on top. Once the fuel's in and it's the rope that you light. So uh, I want to have a go of making one out of uh, a more substantial tin 80 gram tuna tin this one is one of them Weight Watcher ones but it's exactly the same tin more substantial, a lot stronger and I've just managed to find a lid I don't know, some kind of chocolate biscuits maybe and stove rope first of all a row of holes along the top here Well that's it, there's a row of holes all the way around here now. There they are. This now becomes my fuel well. I just need that tin and that rope. Okay, let's force feed this in. Sit it on and round with the stove rope. It's as technical as it goes. I don't know how many, yeah, I think that's just one loop around will probably do. I'm not going to need a depth of two with that. So I was lucky finding the lid for that. Let's cut this off. Put that in. And we'll fire this up for its testing. I'll be using about 15 or 20 mil of methylated spirits. I'm just going to get a measurement here. Well, 20 mil is up to the top of my thumbnail. 20 should be more than enough. Put some of that back. And the rest straight into the tin. Now, what I want to do is allow it to wick through them holes we just made and wet up that rope. So I'm going to give that a second or two. And there's the coffee, that full boil just 
a few minutes later out of curiosity want to see how much fuel there is left well there is a bit of fuel there about five mil maybe a little more a lot of coffee's ready and with all of these type of stoves I always use a snuffer tin that's out that's out and the coffee is done so this is what the complete kit looks like it's a very very small almost pocket sized now this contains the actual stove we've just seen there and this section here this I use as a snuffer to put this stove out it's the only way you can put it out is to snuff it out it also nestles in nicely and also this is a section of tin can which is bigger than the stove base itself so it will sit over and this is the simmer ring and it's a simmer ring we're going to have a look at now you have the cook pot and just light it up And we'll be back in a minute now to witness the simmer ring in action. So here we are at a rolling boil. Time to introduce the simmer ring. And it just pops over there. Put the cup back on. Let's have a look at the flame again. And that's the extent of the boil now with that simmering on. So that was my favourite ever stove made in less than a minute or two uh, so 20 mil was a good amount of fuel to be using outdoors indoors it'll probably run on 15 mil just strain my coffee through that's lovely and it's one of my favorite stoves cheers That is a stove that comes out backpacking out of everything we've seen today. That one's my favourite. So I'm going to leave you with my favourite one. And uh, also, I've made the Tranger stove into rather something special. A pressurised burner with its own integrated burning pot stand. There's a featurette on that. Coming up next on Beck's Bug Out Survivor. So until then, cheers.